This is the last part of lesson two, part four. Please press pause and write down the two dialog boxes in your notes under section four. When you're done writing it down, we will discuss some conclusions. Now that you're done writing it down, we're going to discuss what happens then. It says you have two functions, f of x and g of x, and they're both continuous on some interval a to infinity. Also, we know that the integral from a to infinity of g of x converges. So what's going to happen if the integral from a to infinity of g of x converges and f of x is always less than or equal to g of x, what do you suppose is going to happen? Let's take a look at the graph. It's also important to note that we are talking about positive functions, so they're also always greater than zero. So here's a function g of x. And here's our value a. So we're saying that the integral from a to infinity of g of x converges, saying that this area here converges. So now take another function f of x oops, and have f of x always be less than g of x. What do you suppose is going to happen then? What's going to happen to the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx? Can you guess? You're probably right. Also converges. Converges. Good. Now let's go to the other side. If f and g are continuous on a to infinity, again also positive functions, and the integral from a to infinity of g of x diverges, and then f is always bigger than g, what do you suppose is going to happen? Okay, so let's draw g of x. So g of x is a function like this. It approaches the asymptote, perhaps, but I guess it doesn't approach fast enough because we say that the area from a to infinity diverges. So then we're going to pick another function, f of x, and f of x, according to this, is always bigger than g of x. So if the integral from a to infinity of g of x diverges, then the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx also diverges. Those are the conclusions. Notice it doesn't say, I'll draw a quick one, let's say here's f of x and it converges, and then you have or g of x and it converges, and then I draw another function above it. Well, this one converges and this one's above it, I don't have any conclusion to be drawn. It has to be one of these two specific cases. Uh, just again, in case you're thinking of this. Now suppose I know that this diverges, and I pick one that goes underneath it. That also is inconclusive. Maybe it converges, maybe it diverges. Let's take a look at a proof. Now I have a particular format that I like to follow, and I'm going to ask that you follow it also for examinations, for homework. Please follow this format. So we're going to prove that this integral, as you see in your notes, either converges or diverges using the dialog box, which is the is called the direct or basic comparison test. Those were the three conditions. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in this problem is we're going to let f of x equal the integrand, the function that I see as an integrand. So it's going to be the square root of x squared minus 0 0.01. Next, I'm also going to let g of x equal something. And here's really the key to the problem. We're going to pick an integrand that we know either converges or diverges. So what we want to do, we see here that x squared is the highest term power and then that's under the radical. So you might think of the denominator as simply x. That's our kind of hint or clue. So we're going to let g of x equal 1 over x. Again, that's the square root of x squared, the highest term power in the denominator. So now 
let's go through our steps and I would like you to label them as follows. We're going to say that f of x and g of x are continuous on, um, we're going to pick 1 because that's what the integral says, 1 to infinity open like that. Step 1. Step 2. From our dialog box, we want to say that the integral from 1 to infinity of g of x dx equals the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. And we know that this diverges, or at least you should know that this diverges. Now, why is that? It diverges because this is a p integral where p is equal to 1. Step 3, what we want to say here is that f of x, which is 1 over the square root of x squared minus 0 0.01. We ultimately want to show that this is always going to be bigger than g of x. Hopefully we can. Well, first off, I notice that this is definitely greater than, than, than this. See, the one on the right-hand side, this one here, is smaller because I made the denominator slightly bigger. And then this equals 1 over x, which equals g of x. So we've shown that f of x through this process is less, I'm sorry, is greater than g of x. So those are our three parts that we need. And we conclude, so therefore, the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx which equals the integral from 1 to infinity of dx over the square root x squared minus 0 0.01 also diverges by the direct comparison test. In the next example, we want to see whether or not the integral from 1 to infinity of sine squared x over x squared dx converges or diverges. First thing, we're going to let f of x equal sine squared x over x squared. That's the integrand made into a function. g of x equals. Now, what do you suppose we're going to let g of x equals? It's going to be a function whose integral is a known converger or diverger. So hopefully you can see 1 over x squared. Okay, so now we're going to go through the steps. f of x and g of x are continuous on 1 to infinity. Step 2, we want to say that the integral from 1 to infinity of g of x dx equals the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. And we know that this converges by p integral this case, p is equal to 2, which is bigger than 1. So that converges. Step 3. Uh, step 3 is the challenging part here. We want to show, uh, because the integral of g of x converges, if I can show that f is always smaller than g, then I can show that the integral of f also converges. Okay, to do this, we're going to say oops, f of x equals sine squared x over x squared, which is always less than or equal to 1 over x squared. Do you see why? The sine of x is always between negative 1 and 1, so the sine squared of x is always less than or equal to 1. Uh, excuse me. And obviously bigger than 0. But we have made this, and then this equals g of x so we've successfully done that. We've said that f of x through the process is always less than g of x. And we conclude, I'm going to write it over here to the right, that the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx, which equals the integral from 1 to infinity sine squared x over x squared dx, also converges 
by the direct comparison test. That ends the unit. Thank you.